Hey guys, so we just had our fun, awesome Dallas, Texas trip where we saw some really cool places, met some really cool people as well as we went to the NARBC uh, reptile show down there in Arlington Park. So the NARBC shows, or that stands for the North American Reptile Breeder Conference, are probably in this day and age the ones to go to outside of like uh the big pomona show um the ones that kind of bring the most people and bring things together the most they're in two locations one is in arlington texas which is in that bfw area the other one is in tinley park which is in chicago um the one in chicago is by far larger and brings in more people because there's a lot of people over on the east coast that come to the tinley show but the arlington show also brings in a lot of people and you meet a lot of really cool interesting things um, a lot of the reptiles there are ball pythons because ball pythons are the most popular snake, but that's okay. You still see some really cool ball pythons as well as a lot of other interesting animals, both reptile, both, uh, snakes and lizards, a lot of amphibian stuff. There's a lot of dart frogs down there in Texas. Um, and even a couple mammals here and there, like we saw a really cute couple chinchillas. But that being said, we went there mostly to meet new people and to kind of get ourselves out there as well, both as just kind of someone in the hobby and maybe doing a little bit of video work. The first thing that we got, we actually didn't get at the NARBC show. We actually got at DFW Reptarium, which uh, has its own video, but it was a really, really cool pet shop. The guys there were awesome. They were really nice to let us in there and do some filming and just show us around. Um, but what we got from there, cause we were trying not to spend a whole lot of money is this really cute little portrait. So this is, a juvenile albino western hognose snake. Um, they're really, really cute. This little one was at the DFW Reptarium. This was shot by a photographer whose name I will probably butcher, which I apologize, is Gary McCalley or Gary McCalley. I'm not really sure. Um, but he was this pretty, uh, pretty well known reptile uh, and animal photographer uh, in the Dallas area who did who worked with the DFW Reptarium for a long time and shot a lot of really cool pictures. Uh, they're, they're, they're out there and they're really, really cool. All sorts of different animals, so they were all done there. Um, but unfortunately, uh, this photographer actually passed away a couple years ago. And so what they did was they kind of took in all the rest of the prints that he had made and they're selling off their, uh, they're, they're, they're selling off all of these things and they want to give a portion of that back to his wife and family to you know just kind of help her out and so you know i it, i really love awesome reptile photography and and painting and prints as well and this is going to go up in either the reptile in one of the reptile rooms or somewhere but you know if you guys are ever in the dallas or fort worth area you know check these guys out check out dfw reptarium they are an amazing amazing little reptile store and if they still have any of these prints left, I'm, I mean, there is quite a few in a large variety and everyone can find something they liked. And, you know, like I said, a portion of that's gonna go back to helping out his, his, uh, his family and wife. And I think that's a really great thing. What actually I got really excited about was uh, Eco Publishing. Um, they are a publisher that promotes a lot of reptile and, and animal and a whole lot of nature things. And they had a booth there at the NARBC show that had a lot of different books and publications as well as uh, Tell Hicks who's a really famous nature artist who does a lot of the shirts and stuff. You'll see a lot of them in these videos. This isn't one of theirs. This is Tiki Geckos. Um, but uh, they do a lot of really cool stuff. And they had a lot of books there and I saw some books that I really uh, wanted to get my hands on and it was great they were there and I had an opportunity to get them. The first one was Reptile Odyssey by Bill Love. So a lot of people in this industry probably don't, especially like the new guys and the up and comers, probably don't know who Bill Love is and his wife. These guys are kind of like the big, big grandfathers, even more so than, you know, the Kevin McCurleys and the Brian Barchecks who, you know, have a larger social media presence. These guys uh, started reptile industries. They are the big, big granddaddies of everything. And this book is really cool. This talks about Bill Love 
and his story of journey of going through the reptile industry of you know going out to these far and, and fun and fascinating places and seeing those animals when and then when he started up reptile industries and he was bringing animals in and it was kind of shaping how the reptile industry is now next up we have the serpent in the clouds this is actually a really really interesting and really cool book um, it's written by Ari Flagel. He is honestly a ridiculously interesting person. He's a guy, he works as, I believe he's the head curator of the reptiles at the Fort Worth Zoo, but he is head over heels fascinated with the Bolin's Python. Um, and for any of the new guys starting out, the Bolin's Python is kind of like the the, the flagship Everest unicorn of the reptile industry. These guys are amazing, uh, amazing, amazing animals. They come from uh, Indonesia and Papua New Guinea. Um, they are this very, very rich, dark black with these really pretty bold uh, stripes that have some of the greatest iridescence of any snake. Um, but they are really, really difficult to keep in uh, captivity, especially when it comes to breeding. And a lot of stuff isn't really known a whole lot about these guys. And this guy became, and Ari became fascinated with the Bolin's Python. And now he's funded over 10 trips, almost solely on his own, to New Guinea, doing research about the Bolin's Pythons on his own. He's meeting tribes. He's, you know, making contacts with scientists and people in the zoos and private keepers all over the world and going to New Guinea and he's seeing these bull and pythons in the wild. And we did our best to actually try to meet up with Ari while we were there. But due to kind of last minute and conflicting schedules, we weren't able to meet up with him. But if you guys ever have a chance, if you're in the DFW area, check out their reptile house. And if you can find this book, please buy it. Give it a read. It's really awesome. He has a website. Um, you know, check him out on Facebook, on the website. If you can, you know, give this guy, give this guy a shout out, check his stuff out. And the last book that we got is a book that uh, some people may hate me a little bit about, but um, this is The Ultimate Ball Python by Kevin McCurley. So this is Kevin McCurley of Nerd, who pioneered a lot, a lot of the ball python morphs that we have in this day and age. He released another one a few years back. That was the, I think it's the complete guide of the ball python morphs and stuff. And this is the one he released just a little while ago. I mean, it has a lot of great visual representations and all these really cool patterns and stuff of all the different morphs and genetics. Which, if someone who, like a lot of people, are interested in ball pythons and the complexities of the genes and all the genetics and everything that goes like that, this thing is a really, really great book. And you cannot deny Kevin's knowledge and experience of ball pythons and all the genetics and all the crazy things that he does. And I believe he's actually soon going to be working on one for retakes pretty soon, too. But it was really great to get these books. And I'm super excited to start reading, uh, especially The Serpent in the Clouds and Reptile Odyssey. But this is a really great book that you can learn a lot about the genes. It comes with, uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty big comprehensive text. So it comes with... It's not exactly a, a, a cheap book, but if you can ever, you know, read this or, or uh, get your hands on one of these things, this thing is, is amazingly comprehensive. And now for what everyone was actually waiting for is, did we pick up some reptiles while we were at the Reptile Expo? And the answer to that is yes, we did get three snakes. Uh, the first one, which I was super excited about, is this gray banded king snake or the uh, Lampropetus, uh, I probably butchered that Latin name, uh, Alterna. And these guys are really cool. So this is a king snake, so it's a North American colubrid. They are called gray bands, pretty obviously. These guys are really cool because they're a smaller colubrid. They rarely get over three feet, two to three feet's normal. But a lot of people get super interested in localities. So where snakes or whatever animals are actually from the location, the island, the country, wherever. But gray bands are kind of interesting because they are so dimorphic and polygenic where they have so many different localities that can be uh, differed even in and amongst those things where they their localities are specified all the way down to like mile marker 77 localities. So where 
a certain animal looks a certain way near like this particular range of a mile marker on a highway down in Texas and stuff where these guys even in the same locality can vary so you know this one has these really really thick deep red blotches where sometimes they can be almost solid gray with thin black or have a lot of white on them as well and I just think they're really 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 cool snakes um, you don't see them a whole lot especially here in Colorado um, that's why I wanted to get my hands on one of these things an acquaintance of mine has an adult female so that's why we picked up a male and hopefully we can do a bit of a breeding loan type situation we can produce some more alterna next who without a doubt i am the absolutely most excited about is this girl so this is a baby het annery boa constrictor longicata female so this girl came from Crispy Snakes, which is a really, really cool lady. Her name's Allison down in Austin, Texas. And she breeds very specific boa genes, as well as a few uh, boa constrictor localities. So when I called it a boa constrictor longicata, that is the Latin name for this boa, which is the long tail boa, which doesn't actually necessarily have to reference how long the tail itself is. It's actually in reference to how long the hemipenes or the male reproductive organs of the snake is. And so that's actually what it's in reference to when they call it longicata. But I'm going to continue to call it that just out of uh, kind of habit out of what we call them in the hobby. So she's het anurtheristic. So that means that she carries the genetics for anurtheristic, which is the recessive trait that reduces the reds and the oranges and the browns that creates a more uh, black and white animal. And what's cool about Longicottas is that they're a smaller species of boa, and I'm gonna try to keep this as quick as I can. Um, they're a smaller species of boa. They're not, uh, they're not the imperators, which all the color morphs and stuff that come from. They stay smaller, like between five and six feet. And that's a, a pretty good sized female. But they go through a bit of an autogenetic change, kind of like the green tree pythons or the emerald tree boas, where they're born like a bright, bright red or green, or a bright red or yellow, and then they turn that green. Longicottas, it's not quite that crazy, where they're born and they look, like, just looking at this, you would think this is just a regular boa constrictor of, to the, you know, untrained eye, I guess you could call it. But as they get older, depending on the bloodlines, they will turn drastically different. They will get very, very dark, a lot of black on them. They'll kind of turn this dark gray and black snake. Or, depending on the line, you'll still get that dark gray and black, but you'll get a lot of yellow blushing, and this is really cool. And this little girl comes from a uh, more black and white line. And I just can't wait. And everyone who knows me for a long time, uh, they knows I'm a boa guy at heart. I absolutely love boa constrictors. And after, you know, a few setbacks over the past few years, I'm finally starting to, to try to get back into boa constrictors, specifically localities. And this girl is going to get us off start. Big, big shout out to Crispy Snakes down in Texas for, for helping me get this girl. And last and not necessarily least, um, we have this pastel gravel boy that we picked up by chance. So like I said before, we were mostly there just to kind of meet and talk and see some cool stuff. But on Sunday... Um, you know, it doesn't always happen, but on Sunday, it kind of, it, it, it's not fun packing up all the animals in the enclosures and bringing them to, uh, bringing them to the show. So what happens sometimes is people will kind of mark down their prices a little bit just to get a little bit more as well as they don't have to take everything home on Sunday on the last day of the show. And this guy who was getting out of this particular project, um, you know, for which means that He's, he's not working with these particular genetics anymore. He was switching over to a new line of genetics. Um, he just kind of wanted to make room as well as make a little bit of money for that. So he marked down quite a bit of these snakes. And what that means, and so I called it, so this guy's a pastel gravel. So with ball pythons, it's, there are a lot of genetics where the uh, incomplete dominant form looks pretty much like a normal ball python. Like it doesn't look dramatically different, but once you put them together and you make the super or the homozygous form, then you get the kind of crazy 
colors and combinations that we all know and love. And with the gravel, that is part of the yellow belly complex, which is when you put that to a yellow belly, it allelically makes that highway ball python. And this guy came from a super gravel uh, male, which means that every single animal is going to be a gravel. And, it was, and he's also a pastel. So you've seen in previous videos, we have the pastel highway ball python, which is that really, really cool ball python. And we want to work a little bit more with those specifically. So as you can see, if like to the untrained eye, just looking at this, it just looks like a regular pastel. But once you flip it over, you can see it has that super clean belly. And that's how you can tell it's either a yellow belly or a gravel or I guess technically an asphalt, that's another one in the same uh, complex. But because he did come from a super gravel, that means that every single baby will be a gravel. And so now that we have this guy, we can start pairing him up later once he gets a little bit more size and a little bit older uh, to our ivory females, to our pastel highway female, to if uh, our big girl who's either a yellow belly or a gravel, because we're not quite, quite sure if she proves it's out to be a gravel we can make uh, super gravels, super pastel gravels, highways, and all sorts of fun stuff with this guy. So we didn't necessarily mean to pick him up, but he was really just a really nice animal, great temperament, um, really nice, clean, high blushing on that pastel, which a lot of people, you know, it kind of it kind of kind of sucks to hear it being said where some genetics they're like, ah, I don't want to work with that anymore. It's trash. It doesn't. It's not really good. But pastel. If you are talking about ball pythons, there are a lot of really great combinations that are so drastically improved by the pastel gene. And I think it's pretty underrated in this day and age. And this guy's crazy pattern, you know, he, it's, he's going to pass that pattern on, even if we're making animals that are gonna be that solid white and stuff, he's gonna make other animals that have this really cool busy pattern that if you put to other genetics, that's going to carry on too, which is going to make really cool animals. Hope you guys liked this video. Saw some cool stuff at the show. If you kind of like the, the animals that we saw, if you guys have any suggestions or have any questions or ideas about videos, let me know down in the comments. Please like and subscribe if you can. Hit that bell like everyone says for the push notifications. Uh, follow us on Instagram. We have a Facebook page now. It's all Jay-Z's Reptiles, just to keep things plain and simple. Hope you have a great day, and I'll catch you next time.